And joining me now is Stacey Stevenson. She began burning herself and cutting when she was 15 years old and continued up until her 30s. Stacey wrote an article, Black Girls Cut To, which, where she candidly shares her story. She says, while this problem exists in the black community, its existence is hidden, ignored, even feared. When discovered, emotion in the black community is often viewed as inherently white. This comes from not having a channel in which to communicate the extreme traumatization that began with slavery. Then once we were granted freedom, it came without proper preparation, counseling, or any appropriate outlet to start anew and heal our emotions. And Stacy joins us now. Um, listen, I, I gotta tell you, I have had two friends, Stacy, whose children took their lives. I have had a teenager that I know very well who suffering and was cutting. And these kids all have different walks of life, different races, different backgrounds. And it is just heartbreaking um, to see it and not feel like we can help. I have this platform and that's why you're on. You have your platform. And Dr. Berman is talking and our great moms who were just on with their kids. Are we seeing things get better for them or is this just the beginning of more problems for them? You know, I think that things are starting to get better. And I can talk about it from a, the African-American perspective because I believe that we are starting to actually see that this is a problem. And I commend uh, Tamika, right? Uh, Tanika, excuse me, for actually reaching out to me because whenever I was going through cutting, I knew that I could not say anything to my parents. I knew that had I said something, I would have been dismissed or I would have actually, I felt that I would have gotten in trouble. So, you know, I think that we have a long way to go. And I think the whole crisis of the pandemic and there not being enough beds, that's exacerbating everything. But what I do think is getting better is our awareness as a community that we know that this is happening to our kids now. And I think that's where we need to start. Well, you know, it's interesting, too, because for so long we focus heavily on bullying, which still needs to be focused on and it is critical. But in that, I think, doubling down of dealing with bullying, all of these other issues, anxiety, depression, didn't get the same, you know, PSA movement, right? Didn't get the same, you know, celebrity support because we were so laser focused for so long, rightfully so, on bullying, I believe. I think that's right, absolutely. I mean, for example, you know, if I, I, I suffered from anxiety, I suffered from cutting. And, you know, we had, when I was in high school, we had a lot of uh, discussions about bullying and, and how to stop that, but I didn't have an outlet to talk about my anxiety. Mm. I didn't have an outlet, even a peer group, right, to talk yeah. about cutting. And for example, my friends would see, oftentimes would see cuts on my arms, but they wouldn't really ask questions about it, right? And, you know, when I think about my parents and my community, you know, we talked about bullying. Don't you never let anyone bully you. You better not let anybody pick on you. But had I brought the anxiety or the cutting to the forefront, they would have not had the tools to even address that. They would have not even known how to how to help me with that. Well, I, and I could see that even with uh, Dr. Berman, eating disorders. I mean, listen, I've been a journalist for 30 years, so when I saw a child with marks, I knew it was cutting instantly because I've done multiple stories on it. Mm -hmm. Bulimia, anorexia, I spent, you know, a week in one of the top clinics watching girls come in who were suffering. Yeah. We've had this platform yeah. and this perspective. Most parents don't know. No. And no. that's why you're left feeling I'm a bad parent because they're, using drugs yeah. or doing things that are not how you quote unquote raise them. Yes, and we've now evolved to a world where we don't have a village yeah. anymore. You know, in the past, we in past generations, we had a village to raise our children and now parents are trying to handle all of this in isolation. And it really is a community effort of kids, teachers, pediatrician, therapists. I mean, we all, it's not the parents alone. We wish we, you know, we all wish we could do it all, but we need to have the support. And as they're saying, a platform to normalize that these feelings are real right. and, and a peer groups supported by counselors and teachers who are coming together right. to normalize this. And to this. also recognize this is not gonna be a fairy tale ending. You know, my yeah. son is two years old and someone said, well, they'll be fine, he's a baby. And I said, but this has never happened. Yeah. We don't know what it means to, at nine months, which is what he was at the time, no longer see your grandmom, mm -hmm. your friends, no play groups, no nothing 
from nine months until nearly two years old. Yeah. So how do we know? The book isn't written on this. Right. And that's why we're having this conversation today right. to keep it going and recognize it's an ongoing threat to the lives of teenagers.